Hello, this is Justin Healy, better known as HTC Ohio. I uh, just wanted to put together a short video uh, comparing this uh, InnoMaker uh, VI IMX 290 camera module um, I received from InnoMaker. Uh, this contraption here is uh, for a drone, it's a flight controller and a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, running on an uh, easy Wi-Fi broadcast based system called uh, OpenHD. I'll have links in the description. Basically it uses uh, packet injection monitor mode to transmit and receive uh, digital video. And this is a Raspberry Pi camera V2 module. Um, that I uh, used for a, a test comparison and basically the Wi-Fi broadcast open HD systems are kind of dependent on these camera modules because um, it opens up hardware encoding and decoding keeping latency down which is really important for uh, drones so I uh, figured I'd just show this module they have a uh, little carrier board here and has a onboard image sensor ISP module for automatic uh, uh, adjustments to the video. Um, the thing is any alternative cameras that use these uh, flat flex CSI type cables with the Raspberry Pi um, for the moment, don't have things like auto white balance, wide dynamic range, auto exposure. So in order to get that to work, my understanding is it kind of has to be handled on the board itself. And then uh, it bypasses or it it's not able to use some of the um, hardware video encoding features on the Raspberry Pi because it's a locked heart um, firmware. So this is an alternative and overall I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Um, it's a newer product that just came out so I figured I'd share my experiences. So in the video I'm going to show two of them. The first is the regular Raspberry Pi um, camera and you'll notice that the video is a little grainy has some noise so all settings being equal um, on this camera all I had was wide dynamic range mode activated on it um, and all of the other uh, Raspi vid functions like setting your encoding and a few other things I'll have a link in the description can be set like you would for this it's just instead of a uh, raspivid it's vi raspivid raspivid <laughs> for the functions but anything like auto white balance exp auto exposure um uh what else metering mode some of the things you'd maybe use to make your H.264 encoding with a Pi camera. Um, that has to be done through a different command line. It's a I2C um, dot SH command line. Uh, I finally got that part figured out. Um, so I'll probably have more videos to follow. I just wanted to share a little bit about this. Um, so yeah, check the uh, description in, on the video for the link to our OpenHD drone video transmission project, as well as uh, an image that makes this camera plug and play with the OpenHD system. So you just need the Pi flight controller and um, compatible Wi-Fi cards. All that's on our wiki. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. This is the V2 cam, regular Pi cam. Here's the 
Timex 290 cam. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, test went pretty well. Um, do pick up about uh, 20 or 25 milliseconds of latency extra on our system. Uh, probably be the same for any other system. Probably the result of the image processor being on the camera and also not having full use of the OpenMax uh, MMAL GPU encoding. Um, if this camera could be made available um, with 30, 48 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 90 frames per second, uh, when, you're work when you're working with these digital systems, the higher the frame rate uh, you can have uh, use, the latency will be lower. So like on this V2 camera, if you run that at 90 frames per second, our latency is around uh, uh, anywhere between 80 and 100 milliseconds. Reason being is a couple frames are stored in the GPU. So if you take, you know, three frames out of 90 frames per second, that's however many fractions of a second compared to a camera that's limited to 30 frames per second, um, just two of those frames, uh, three of those frames come out to a hundred milliseconds. <clears throat> so I'm hoping a module like this can be made available, uh, at the higher frame rates and also at, uh, 480p, 720p as well. That would be ideal because our system works best when it's you know, between 5 and 10 megabits per second on the video bit rate on the wireless transmission. So, uh, hope this little review is helpful. That's all. Cheers.